Innovations in contraception. I, Dr. Pratibha Baldava, I am going to speak to you on a different topic today. That is contraception. Need for contraception. World's population is expected to reach 9 billion by 2050, and India accounts for 17% of this world's population. If we prevent almost 20 21% of these pregnancies, around 55 million unwanted pregnancies will be prevented, 22 million fewer abortions will happen, and 90,000 fewer maternal deaths. The reason for un unintended pregnancies is unawareness, the side effects of the present contraceptive methods, high cost, difficult mode of delivery, and fear of irreversibility of fertility. So this is what happens if there is an unintended pregnancy. The person runs from pillar to post just asking for help and it is a big mental and a physical burden on that person. Not voting is the first cause of unwanted precedencies. So as well, not choosing the right contraception is the first cause of unintended pregnancies. The available methods in the past were temporary permanent immunocontraception. Nowadays, we have newer methods in all these sectors that is IUCDs and uh, oral contraceptive pills, patches, and also vaginal rings. An ideal contraceptive should be safe, effective, acceptable, inexpensive, reversible, simple to administer, independent of coitus, and should be long-lasting to avoid frequent use of contraceptive. Factors to consider while innovation are, it should be better than the traditional methods, it should be longer period of effectiveness, reduced dosing, reduced risk, quick reversibility and less user dependent. The currently available methods are temporary and permanent, both for male and female. These contraceptives are divided into various forms such as oral contraceptive pills, barrier contraceptives, IUCDs and hormonal methods. The barriers are condoms, diaphragm, cervical caps, IUCDs are copper teas, and nowadays LNG IUCD, hormonals are OC pills and others that we know of. The newer contraceptives are given by transdermal delivery that is a contraceptive patch that is ortho -ivra, transdermal gel or transdermal spray. We will see each of them in detail. Ortho Evra patch is effective by almost 90 to 99 percent. It has a 28 day regimen and a 21 day regimen in which the dose is 30 microgram ester ethanol esterol. This is how a patch fits. It can be put anywhere on the back or on the upper part of the shoulder or on the upper shoulder, uh, upper back. This is how it is used. The gel contains NES, a progestin which is used. It can be applied in a dose of 2.3 mg per day for 21 days or Nistrone, it causes no skin irritation. This is how the transdermal gel is again used. It is applied on the ventral aspect of the hand or the upper shoulders from where it, is, it gets absorbed and it acts as a contraceptive. The spray. The spray is a meter dose transdermal spray and it is used in phase 1 for it is it is a fast drying spray and it is suitable for breastfeeding women who cannot tolerate contraceptives. This is how the transdermal spray looks like. It is just sprayed on the upper aspect of the arms or the hands and from where it gets absorbed. The vaginal contraception uh, is also in the form of a nuva ring. This is effective in 92 to 97%. It releases NES and 15 microgram ethanol estradiol per day. There is a 21 day pill and a 7 day pill free period. This is how the ring looks like and it fits into the vagina just like the vaginal condom. So when the ring is put, it, is not, it does not interfere with intercourse as well. The vaginal gel has permicidal action and it can be used just before the coitus and so it, it need not be used regularly or on everyday basis. This is how vaginal gel has to be inserted into the vagina and it is a vaginal microbicidal gel. There are newer OC pills contain desogestrol. This desogestrol is a wonder drug because it suppresses ovulation uh, in 97 to 100% patients and it also creates a thick mucus plug and therefore is more effective than the older contraceptive pills which contain newer desogestrol. The newer IUCDs are uh, LNG IUCD. 
these were the previous classical uh, iu series which were used in the past including a copper t 380a copper t 375 a st 300 copper t nowadays we have an lng 20 copper t that is a levonorgestrel copper t which releases 20 microgram per day we call it as mirina and it is used over five years it releases 15 microgram per day which can be used for seven years so this is how an lng iucd looks like it has a sleeve in which the steroid reservoir is there and it has a t-shaped polyethylene plastic frames t which is easily insertable now we come to the male hormonal contraceptive In this, there is androgen formulations, that is dose interval, it can be given in the form of te testosterone undeconnert injections or 17 alpha uh, methyl testosterone injections. These injections are given as intramuscular injections, dose interval is around 1 to 2 weeks, overall contraceptive efficacy is 94.7%. The side effects are from weekly injections of 200 mg. There are two types that is testosterone decanoid and testosterone undecanoid. Dose interval is again 4 to 6 weeks for decanoid and around 8 to 12 weeks. They can sometimes be painful and cause high peak reactions. The transdermal testosterone patch can be given at a dose interval of uh, daily dosage but it has poor efficacy and high frequency of skin irritation. The testosterone gel is much more effective. The testosterone buckle system is put just below the buckle area and it is uh, obtained by the treadmill strain. It is applied twice a day. Dose interval is daily but the side effect is allergic reaction. Sperm production requires retinoic acid. So if we give a retinoic acid antagonist, it can also as a, act as a sperm antagonist. So failure of spermatids to align will give rise to that. Intravas device that is it's a non-hormonal injectable silicon plugs these are injected into the vas deferens so that the sperms don't move forward it is a reversible inhibition of sperm under guidance and it acts as a polymer gel of sterine malic anhydride injected into the lumen of the vas deferens causing the blockage of sperms now we come to immunocontraception In immunocontraception, we have anti-sperm vaccines, anti-ovum vaccines, anti-conceptus vaccines. Anti-sperm vaccines are antibodies which act against the sperm antigens. There are two types of sperm antigens, functional antigens and structural antigens. So antibodies to both will be anti-sperm vaccines. Anti-ovum vaccines are antigens focused on the surface area of the zona pellucida and causes an inflammatory reaction in the ovary which might be indicative as a, so it will not attract sperms. Antibody mediated contraceptive effects will cause agglutination of sperms, lysis or immobilization and surface coating and blocking of the sperms. Anticonceptive vac vaccines are all still theoretical stage where they are being tried as placental specific antigens. It forms a part of the trophoblastic cell membrane. Also there are other types of... Now let's uh, understand the contraceptive drug market analysis for a minute. The drug market is on a rise because the health issues associated with teenage pregnancies, there is a rise in awareness regarding recent contraceptive methods, the growing usage of oral OC pills as a pivotal technique. But we should remember that only hormonal methods are not if, in, enough if we have to protect from sexually transmitted infections. So to prevent both STIs and pregnancy, we need hormonal contraceptive plus a condom. Vasectomies have been the gold standard when it comes to uh, preventing unwanted pregnancies. It takes balls to do what you just did is such a bold statement to uh, confirm the same. Thus, Chota Parivar, Khushi Parivar and hormonal contraceptive is the only medicine that you would not want to forget. Thank you so much.